Hello. Hello. And welcome to the Talking Point, which is our pre-podcast rambling. That was nicely uh, timed. <laughs> yes. So, we covered last week the uh, the annoying words in the industry. Yes, yes. Last week's question was, which term in the games industry do you want to see die a horrible and painful death? Or which term would you like to fuck off? We had a few of our favourites. From what I remember, because I drank a lot last week. You went with MMO. MMO is pretty much my... You chose MMO, and I went with the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to say it like that, because it's the cloud. It's going to save gaming. I love the fact that the cloud has been around for years. Basically, it's just a set. Yeah. I mean... It's, it's, a, it's an IT tech term. It's It means... Just leave it to us. We'll work it out. You just let it happen. Yeah. Like we've been doing for years, we just never called it yeah. the cloud. Um, we're not the only ones that kind of had strong opinions, though. No, no, no. By the looks of the length of some of these answers, it's... People are passionate yeah. about it. Um, there's not one not on that comment, because I've just remembered what it was. Uh, Michelle, our, our regular nutter, did, couldn't bother the comment in this week, but she did say, tacked on multiplayer. No, but I, I don't agree with that one being an annoying word. Because I know, it's descriptive. I know, but I kind of think she's gone off brief there with the, the, the term. That's just but, something that personally annoys her. Well, it's something that personally annoys her about games at the minute, that multiplayer that's tacked on to games that don't deserve it. Don't get single-player games. Uncharted, for example. Solid single-player game. I don't like it personally, but I'll accept solid single-player game. Did not need the multiplayer. Yeah. Again, I've not played it. Yeah. <laughs> God, my gaming, my gaming knowledge now is getting to the point where I'm going to be even more useless on this thing. Yeah. Because I haven't played games in so long, I'm slowly coming back round. Yeah, but you, you, we're, we're in for a refresh. We're going to have to reboot the podcast at the same time as the, as the PS4 comes out. Yes. Because you will be... We can, can be, be the world's first PS4 dedicated... But let's screw no, it. no, we've, we've already been beaten. There's been one going <laughs> since the fucking thing was announced... <laughs> I thought I was onto something though. No. Uh, Stuart Renton took it the other way. Hmm. He mentioned the uh, the fact that he's sick of some of the gaming terms seeping into the non-digital gaming world. So, uh, in particular, some of the MMO terms seeping through to pen and paper um, role-playing games. So, instead of people rolling t- uh, paladins and fighters, they're rolling tanks. And... Um, also, he doesn't like the the use of term uh, to roll a character in an MMO because you don't roll a character in the same way you do in an RPG. Just you just create one. it. <laughs> yeah. You pick one. I would like that one, please. Yeah, I, I, I would like that. And you get the same stats. Also, he hates Toon. Yeah, because that's what some people call their character. Oh, right. I, to me, that's a Geordie town. Yeah. I'm off to Toon. <laughs> that wasn't Geordie. No. Um, I, that was the worst. That was a very bad actor. So, <laughs> so what, what? What's a tune? It's a character. Some people You've lost me. <laughs> your your play it, your character in the game. It's my so, tune. Some people refer to it as their tune. Do they? Yes. Who are the? Are these people Geordies? No. I I don't understand what a tune is. I don't understand why that because everything kind of has some kind of to roll something that makes sense because you roll a dice tune. Yeah, Toon no. isn't a word. No, some people actually refer to their MMO characters as toons, which is wrong. I agree with him. It needs to go away. If, End if your character goes a bit mad, is he a Looney Tune? <laughs> <laughs> how, lo- <laughs> how far into the conversation did you think of that and how long have you been trying to crowbar it in? <laughs> I just honestly spare the moment. Um, immersive. Alec hates immersive. Yes, Alec has gone with immersive. And this I can agree with, because immersivity? That's not a word. Yeah, immersiveness. How immersive a game is... Is completely personal. Yeah. It's also based upon many, many factors. If you say a game is immersive, that doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. It's immersive because of the storyline, sound gameplay that doesn't make you think, yeah. oh shit, I'm playing a game. There's lots of things that can make a game immersive. Sound alone can make a game immersive. You yeah. can have a black room, have decent Amnesia. sound. Amnesia. I, I still... I bought it, I refuse yeah. to play it. Amnesia. Immersive. Dead Space, the first time you play it. You shit yourself and you watch every air vent. Every air vent after you've seen the first one happen. 
Now that's immersion. That for me is a level of immersion because at that point, you're second guessing the environment that you're walking around. Can I call Doom Three? You can. It's not a good game, but it's the only game I've ever had to turn off. No other game have I ever thought I'm done yeah. <laughs> and stepped away from my machine. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a it's too flexible a word to be used as a gaming term. And yeah. he points out that it just gets tacked on to any feature that a games company would like to highlight. And his his comment is that he's betting that most of the com- words on this thing are only on this list as a result of marketing over using them. Yeah. So immersive gets tacked on to any feature. So immersive crafting and immersive uh, storyline. and uh, Yeah. Basically, immersive, pick any game element. Yeah. But... I, the problem I have with, with all of this is just, it's not necessarily anything it, it just devalues the word, it cheapens yeah. it and it would be useful yeah, well, it's useful as long as it's used in, in Dan, context Dan points out that it's uh, it's overused as a marketing term but it's actually useful from the reviewer's toolbox yeah. so for the reviewer to explain but again, as I said it's, it's a personal contextual thing so what you find immersive I'm you I, like you like GTA 5 you like the Gran Turismo series you get immersed in actually t- tweaking and tuning your car I know you don't, don't you picked two different games you said GTA yeah I, mean. I know because I, I, I said <laughs> GT and then I, I was thinking it. I have not played GTA 5 if I had I'm sure I'd have a lot no, more followers on no, Twitter no. Gran Turismo yeah. you get involved in which car you're driving what tyres they're on and all that lot you get immersed in that aspect of the gameplay for me I just want a fast fucking car yeah to drunkenly swerve up and down the track. You were the only person, when I set you all the challenge, drive around this track without spinning. Yeah. You're the only one that thought, fine, I'll just drive really fucking slowly. Yeah. <laughs> I you took down gonna... a pint because of that. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Everyone gonna... else spanned late on the first corner. You, just five miles an hour around don't, the track don't. in the F1 car. <laughs> just... Don't. Set a bet if you don't. <laughs> I can't believe you were that sound of mind at the time to actually think... I'll just leave it in top gear and just accelerate slowly everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Wank. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's how yeah. subjective it is. Immersive it? is to gaming like a score is to a game. Yeah. It's basically, it's nothing without the description behind it. Yeah. You could have a game that's 5 out of 10, but really fun to play. Yeah. Going on standard scoring tactics of graphics 3, this, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you describe everything behind it, you shouldn't really obviously use the term immersive, but you need to go into detail. Without yeah. that detail, it's a pointless term. Yep. And unfortunately, immersive on a box is what sells, which I've never quite understood. Yeah. Carry on. Um, Hugh Renton also went into the. Uh, he got into the uh, shit talkers that you pop up into on multiplayer games and the term. The, when any little retard uses the word word rape in any context other than the original meaning. Hmm. Uh, and I think in that he is actually just, not just that term, anything those little shits yell at you over the... I raped your mum last night! Well, no, you really didn't. Hmm. I mean, she, she, she's been dead for quite some time. That would be necrophilia. <laughs> the thing is, I've never understood that kind of trash talking. I... My mum's not dead, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I made a point yeah. of... I, I sensationalised. I put on Reddit, you know, this, if anything, is going to kill the industry. Yeah. Obviously, it's not going to kill it, but I mean, kind of the morals and yeah. the people in it and so on, it's not good for it in the slightest. I got lots of comments of people basically saying, I can't believe you're sensationalising this, blah, blah, blah. Ask it like a normal question. So I did, and everyone went, no, it's fine. This is about the language that people use online. I don't understand how... Anyone sees it normal to say I've raped your mum or I've fucked your brother or, yeah, or, or whatever the hell they come out with. Teabagging. Yeah, it's no teabagging I understand. No Because it's purely visual and it's just kind of a little insult. It's basically like, ha ah, fuck you. But it's the thin end of the wedge. You let teabagging through and you've got to accept the 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 top end of trash talk. Well, the great thing is, you know what response I got? And this was from Americans. Oh teabagging uh, sorry, teabagging. You cut me now. Um, trash talk is just a part of the game. It happens in all sports. Rugby. Rugby, you get a bit of trash talk, but let's be honest, rugby is very disciplined. Yeah. They don't answer back oh, all no, that no. much. They, they d- it's moment, not a good part moment of the game. moment the referee steps in, 
you, you've never seen a more calm group of people. Exactly. They, they back down and, and they get kicked off the pitch for too much foul language. The referee can go up and yeah. say, you're acting like an ass. get off. This, to me, is what games need. They need yeah. some kind of refing system because currently it doesn't work. Because if somebody's trash-talking in a server and they're being an obnoxious little twat... Maybe this is one of those areas where Xbox may have the edge in the next generation with that reputation system that they're yeah. building in. That's what you need. You need that was a ref. And it, I, we don't know enough about it to say it for definite, but if it works, then yes, Xbox you, will have won on need, that aspect. Yeah, you need a ref. The problem is you need people to report it. Currently, in games, you should be able to kick people if enough people vote to get them out. But people don't give a shit. No. They genuinely don't. And I just... For those few that do World care, Warcraft, World Warcraft really does have that system. Annoying. When Since they've added the random grouping, they're looking yeah. for group thing in the looking for group thing is the vote to kick system so if somebody's acting like an ass vote to kick and if the rest of the group if more than half of the rest of the group agrees boom they're gone yeah i i think it's it might just be the fact that i grew up with pc servers where we yeah. had zero tolerance mm-hmm. if somebody was an ass they were gone they didn't have a chance May, to have no, a but second that, that's, a vote. That's they the were di- gone that's the difference though but when you were when you're on a pc <laughs> server they they were your servers it, and they were I mean. they were people's servers you were the ref yeah. You had that. So there there were people that had a vested interest in keeping their server clean and friendly yeah. because otherwise people wouldn't come back. So even though your your personal clan server was was one of them, um a corporation, say Games I don't know if they did, say GameSpot ran a, a server at that time. There it would be in their interest to have somebody to keeping that up. server clean because otherwise people wouldn't come back yeah, and they wouldn't be able to advertise their site to them. Now, there is no downside to being an arse online. No. Basically, you've got all the anonymity of the web. And I managed to say that, which I'm quite impressed yeah. with. All the anonymity of the web, twice. And no no downsides at all. No. So you can go in and say, I'm going to rape your mum, go hang yourself, go kill yourself, blah, blah, blah. And, well, more and more so people are. Yeah. <laughs> which, it's it's not good. Now, Mr. Lockwood came up with the term masterclass to describe somebody showing off a game, and it's yeah, it's kind of pointless unless <laughs> unless they're going to bring back the TV show Games Master, which I think they should. Uh, who who would you replace uh, Patrick Moore with? This, oh, this is that's what you, a, that's need. <laughs> you need somebody to replace Patrick Moore, don't you? But I can't think of anyone that has. Could we put Peter Molyneux in there? I'm starting to like him now. Because it's after this. <laughs> I'll explain in the podcast. Come to yeah. the podcast and he'll, we'll explain it. But yeah. I'm, I'm turning around on Peter Molyneux. He's, <laughs> he's suddenly become my best friend, <laughs> which is really, really annoying. Um, Graham Linehan. Who? Writer of uh, IT Crowd, Father Ted. Ah. Actually quite a good game. Or Dara Breen, also a... Uh, proper uh, geek. Proper geek. Actually, yeah, Dara O'Brien, I think, would be good because you'd have the comedy element. Yeah. Let's right. We'll start. <laughs> we'll start a petition online with Dara. O'Brien. Bring back Games Bring Master with Dara O'Brien. <laughs> uh, so we've got Dan's response as well, which was, well, we've already covered the. Uh... He, he went on to a bit of a, a rant again, but his his thing was the term indie. Yeah. Uh, we discussed and this before, it, yeah. kind of. And it's, it's, a ter- it's a, the use of the term indie to sell to say indie games and it's marketing and it's buzzwords and it's lost all its definition. But I personally think he's got the wrong end of the stick because yes, it is being overused as a marketing term. Yeah. But he uses the example of uh, what's the, that that game company and Journey, and it being classified as indie now. This is where it's wrong. It's being classified as an indie game. It's not an indie game because it was published on a contract for Sony. However, that does not discount the fact that that game studio is no longer an indie game studio. They are still an independent game studio. They aren't owned by a publishing company. They can publish with whoever they want. They can yeah. sign whatever they contracts they want. Three games. For they they just happened to sign a contract with that particular stu- uh, publishing studio for those three particular games. It doesn't make them any less indie. 
This yeah. is where this is it's where it's an awkward one where an indie shouldn't describe a game. It should never describe a game. A game is not yeah. an indie game. A game is a game made by an indie developer. Yeah, basically, indie has become the same for games as what it is yeah. for music. Where oh, that band's indie. Why? Because they sound like this. Well, that no, that's not that's the not definition. that's not how it works. No. Indies are self-controlling organisations, independent like games Activision. companies. We've been through this discussion on yeah. a previous podcast. Now that Activision own 51% of their own uh, shares, they have controlling stake. And if they want to, they can push through any decision they want to. Yeah, That's it. If they, if they make a decision and they want that to stick, they just push it through. It's In, job done. Indie now is more used as an ethos, the type of company. Yeah, it? it's, it's Basically, a, if it's low budget, it's indie. That's how people are pushing it. Yeah, but that's it. not how... No, no, that's not how it works. But, but that's how people are portraying it. So unfortunately now, if a game is low budget, regardless of how fun it is, it's classed yeah. as an indie game, and people go, oh, it's great for an indie game. And you think, shut no. your face, it's just great. Yeah. A good game is a good game, uh, relevant yeah. to how much is spent, yeah. who spent yeah. it. Game is game. The, the, the indie tag does not get tagged. The, the indie phrase does not get tagged onto the game. The indie is the studio that made it. That's my bugbear yeah. on that whole thing. Because it, it, that's it. He he actually said that game company lost its indie status as soon as it signed an agreement to develop a PS3 exclusive. It didn't. Even it <laughs> lost it for those games, but not for the company because now they're not. And uh, Journey, Flower, and Flow have all come out on Steam since. There you go. I just honestly, I I put it purely if the powers that be dictate your game, it's not an indie game. If they just say make us some games. Yeah. It's an indie game. I know that goes contrary to everything yeah. you've just said about it not being an indie game, but to me, that's it. If somebody else is in- intervening and saying, you can't do that, yeah. you've not got power anymore. Yeah. So to me, it's it's if you have this idea and you can do it through to execution exactly yeah. how you want, it's indie. Well, that's it, Limbo. Limbo. Exactly it, what you wanted to do. Limbo was an independent games company, made an independent game, and it was an exclusive to the Xbox, and yeah. then it's not. <laughs> well, that's it. They... They bought it after it was produced. Yeah. And then Sony said, actually, guys, we want that. And then iOS, I think, came out and said, yeah, can we have that too? Yeah. Is it iOS now? I seem to think Limbo's uh, moved I think it's there. moving to iOS. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm it's a, I'm on Steam. And, up, I know it's PS3. Yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. um, we have one last one. Uh, Mosh Miller came up with a term, levelless. Now, yeah. I agree with him. I hate that term. Because it's, it's a lie. Because it's absolute bollocks every time it's used. Yeah. We we built this RPG with a levelless uh, system, but you haven't, have you? You've still got skill trees, which require experience. So you basically all you've done is take the arbitrary cap. You've, <laughs> you, out, I like to think you've just blurred the lines. Instead of having a definite, this is level one, this is level two. You've gone. Kind of, you know, you've got a few extra skills on the way. Yeah. You've got a few more, you've got a few more, and eventually you're level 60. But we're not going to put that number on it, we're just going to say awesome. Yeah. We've, we've got rid of the arbitrary cap every so often that gives you a sign that you're progressing. If anything, it's kind of it's kind of worse off. Yeah. Because when you get that little thing and your bar fills, and you get that kind of, well done, yeah. there's a bit of you that goes... Yeah, yeah. I did that. Generally, all these <laughs> levelless systems, so Eve, uh, Secret World, uh, oh, fuck, there's some more out there that I can't think of right now, but they, you know the kind of game. It's not my genre, but yeah. Yeah, RPGs. Sure, they Mindy, all plenty. have They all have a kind of currency system to replace the ex- what would have been a levelling experience yeah. bar. So instead of having to get to level three before you can have that ability, you can get... You can gain X amount of currency to buy that ability. It's even like, you know, kind of, you need this much money to buy this sword. Yeah. That's a levelling system. Yeah. If you have to do something, like earn if you so have, much of if something you, to get something. If you have a target to get the thing, you have a level. Yeah. Think about it. That sword basically makes you more powerful. You need yeah. that sword to progress. Currency is now your experience meter. Yeah. You just choose when you press the button to tick over to yeah. the next. <laughs> it's just nonsense. Anywho. And that's it. That's all, that's all. 
So, this week's talking point, I wanted to discuss the fact that Destructoid hmm. have done something a bit different. Now, all, most gaming sites out there are powered by adverts, and they have been for quite some time. Most of the web is powered by adverts. Yep. This is just common knowledge. Now, they wanted for a while, they've been discussing for a while, how to get out of the grip of the advertising fairy. And they've gone one way, and that's they've offered a a premium ad-free version of the site. So a kind of subscription yeah. version of the site. Let's that, be honest, there's a few, a few ways you can monetize yeah. a website. You can either sell products, yep. donate... Yep. A subscription type. Time, basis. Uh, go the go with the uh, New York Times so paywall. paywall, or a subscription type basis where you can get rid of adverts. So mm-hmm. It's a minor benefit for. Yeah. Now, th- there's issues amongst all of these. First of all, a paywall is never a solution. Paywalls as, never work. As far as I'm concerned, a paywall doesn't they, work. They, they say they admit that they did consider that actually paywalling the archive material. So out, so it stays on the site free for a week yeah. or two weeks and then goes for premium members but only. You, you know where the problem is? Destructoise content isn't anything you can't get anywhere else. No. Unfortunately, journalism has got to the point where it's pretty much dead. This has been proven. Yeah. You can put a rumour out there and it'll appear on every single freaking website. Yeah. One story goes across every single gaming website. No, but I think... We I, do it. I Everyone think, does it. I think, yeah, I think they were more on the uh, on the topic of their their site-specific articles. So, Jim Sterling's rants and uh, yeah. that kind of thing. I just... I find it very difficult to monetize a website the way they've done it. Because if every single website did this... Yeah. And let's be honest, it's nice to think that everyone gets an article from just one news site. But you don't. No. The internet as vast as it is, allows you to go to multiple news sources. Yeah. If every single one had this kind of service, you would spend a fortune. Yeah. I, I, I can't see this being a sustainable model, especially when lots of people implement it. However, no, I, I can see it work. It's, yeah, larger term, it may not work as a, as a model. Being the first but on the bandwagon is going to help Being the them. first on the bandwagon will help them, but also... I don't think you that people will have that mindset of they'll pay for it on every site they go to. What they'll do is they'll pick the site that they go to most frequently. They'll pick the site that they like, and like the free-to-play model in gaming, they will pay for the one they enjoy seeing most. They will pay but, for the one they enjoy the writing of. But what are the benefits? If it's just a reduction of adverts, completely no adverts, you're getting them on. 90% of your browsing experience because you've only paid for that one. There's no benefit in not getting adverts on that website. Yeah, I'm going to be fair. Quit. I don't understand people's annoyance with adverts. No, I don't. People are banner blind. It's been proven. I've... You ignore adverts. You just yeah. don't see them. Why people get so annoyed? I know some people do. They the arguments are always interesting because people say they're irrelevant. Yeah. Not relevant, uh, not in any way interesting to me, blah blah blah. The same people, usually in the same There's breath. the other perks that they're giving. You also get automatically entered into the competitions on all four Destructoid-based sites. Okay. Uh, discount on limited edition and uh, stores and partner store items. Early access to video games via members only codes. So if they get beta codes, they're now paying members that get first dibs. Right. Uh, 3% of the membership goes to charity. Okay. And more egg, extra backing stuff every uh, every month. I Is it bad that none of that stuff no. really interests me at all? No, it's, but for you it's not. But for some people it will be. And Fair enough. I mean, they have some <laughs> fairly substantial competitions. Yeah. So the competition's automatic entry is, is a useful thing. And... Yeah, it, it's not vast amounts, so it's a bit weird. And I'm not against them doing this. I'm happy to see anybody trying to book the advertising trend. I, My issue with this is that the entire advertising world is a bit skewed. I mean, we have, I mentioned earlier, yeah. Adblock Plus 
is one of the most successful plugins for stopping ads online. Yeah. Adblock Plus recently came out and thought uh, with their monetizing tactics, what they're going to do is they're going to let any advert which sticks to a certain formula and meets yeah. certain guidelines, basically good advertising, through the net. Yeah. It might not even be targeted, so it's no. still bad advertising as far as yeah. I'm concerned. They will also, for big companies, charge them to yeah. let things through the net. And no so big company's going to pay. No, they're just basically trying to hold the internet to ransom to get a bit of cash. Yep. This is blackmailing the advertising industry. Yeah. Now, the other thing about this is if you've got an advert, usually you try and target it to your audience. Otherwise, it's a waste from the advertiser's yeah. point of view. It's a waste from your point of view. It pisses off both yeah. parties. If you don't allow tracking cookies because of privacy concerns and Obama's watching you... Yeah. You're going to get shit adverts. Yeah. If nobody can see what type of person you are, they can't advertise to you. Well, they, they, <sighs> Sorry, no, carry on. They, no, this is one of the things. <laughs> this destructoid idea of going subscription-based, so subscribers pay and get rid of adverts. Yeah. Now, this, to me, is a good thing for destructoid. And the reason I want to, I want to say that is because when your only income source is the advertisers... You start dictate that starts dictating towards your content. Yeah, always dictates towards your content. So if certain types of article get more page views, so therefore make more money, you start producing more of those articles. Hence the rumors it, 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 and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Hence that, that why rumors yeah. get because rumors get page views. Yeah. Now if Destructoid can, as a result of taking the adverts out and going subscription based for some people, can start. It can stop having to play into the advertiser's hands, then you're going to get a better class of content on their site, and then that makes it worthwhile. There's a, a YouTube service <clears throat> that's done something similar. There's a site, it's a new startup called Subbable. It's okay. very, very annoying to say. And what they are, they've got a few YouTube, view, uh, YouTube people on there at the minute, and me. you can subscribe... You can voluntarily subscribe, and when the subscriptions have been done, once they've hit their target for the month, it's kind of kickstart a mash, uh, mash with a subscription, right. and you earn perks for paying into the subscription voluntarily. Adverts will go away from the site. So basically, you're funding certain YouTube creators to keep creating yeah. their videos so that they can create the videos they want to make, not the videos... That the the advertisers need you to make to make more money to be able to fund yourself. Well, the bit that gets me is really, the problem isn't advertising. It isn't the website. It's, it's the people, people. People. Because what we're doing is when somebody puts up this crap, which is usually just a quick yeah. kind of copy and paste from somewhere else. People flock to it, but I don't know about which they, suggests that people want to read it. But that's because the entire it, there is a slight problem in that the. It, the entire advertising model works around views, not around quality. It works around mass market. Yeah. But people wouldn't view it unless it was something they were interested in. Well, no, it works, means... it works around views rather than quality. So, in YouTube's case, a, a three-second clip of a pair of breasts gets more views than a properly worded video that explains the history of the British monarchy. Which is something a video I've watched, and it's quite funny. CP Gray, he's a brilliant YouTube. I've animal. just figured out how he can make a lot of money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Reviews with breasts. Yeah, yeah. But that that that's what's wrong because those view that thumbnail's better, so they get more views, so that person gets more money than the person who's yeah. gone gone and spent months researching something, d doing all the animations and creating. So the problem is everyone that complains. Yeah. Awesome. We're all assholes. No, what was the question? <laughs> the, the, the question was, what's your opinion on uh, Destructoid <laughs> rolling out the uh, advertisers? I think short term they're going to make money and they're going to allow it's going to allow them to make decent content. But long term, when more and more websites implement this kind of thing, it's going to become a failed approach to making money online. That is my. I I think it's going to work. Uh, both short and long term, because I don't think it's about making money. I think it's about taking the site out of the grasp of the ad advertisers so that they go, again, back to a more independent state. 
So that they're not beholden to the advertiser. But the annoyance there is they never were beholden to the advertiser. They were beholden to our page views. If we didn't view the well, pages, no, no. they didn't get the money. So really, what's no, happening? No, 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 because that, that, that's because the advertiser paid the bills. So they needed our page views to get the advertiser to pay the bills yeah, to pay for the staff. But we only look at what we're interested in. Yeah. This is the annoyance. People look at shite. I mean, absolute crap. No. Go and read the You're worst right. reviews. Because, from think about it, from your RSS feed, you've got review of this game, review of this game, review of this game. All three are the same. You just generally pick one. I don't, Ethan. I don't read reviews anymore. <laughs> so what the hell do we go on? What do people look at online? There's something that draws people in. Usually it's something unique. Or it'll be something that is time exclusive. Do, do, or right, it, well, everybody can see exactly what draws me in, uh, and it's writing style, uh, uh, mainly, because all of my news comes from RSS feeds, and I have, I can tell you in my RSS feeds because I've got them there. I've got Rev Three, Destructoid, Gamespot, Ink Gamers, Massively, and Rock Paper Shotgun. <laughs> they're, they're, they're they're very sick. It's very specifically written sites I like the personalities mm. on Rev3 Destructoid's writing style the people that write for that Jim Sterling both I love him and he pisses me off I, I, I love that about him the he's, fact that he's have, quite. <laughs> uh, 50% of the time he's spot on 50% of the time he's just shut up you twat <laughs> yeah you imagine he's one of those people you'd never want to drink with no, I'd want to drink with him because he'd be the kind of person that we that you'd have the most. You'd have one of those rows where you <laughs> shake hands at the end, yeah. both bloody and bruised. Yeah, yeah. Well blood. done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, um, round it up there. Yeah, that's yeah. it. What's your thoughts? How should websites be monetized? Advertising, paywalls, destructoid yeah. approach where you pay for perks yeah, well, and well, so well, on, or yeah, just what's your take on the destructoid advert system? <laughs>